to startuprad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome. Um, this is Christian from New York speaking from startuprad.io. I say welcome to our t December 2023 wrap up with vital news from the startup and tech entrepreneurship scenes in Germany, Austria and Switzerland in 30 minutes or less. Um, our startup news are recorded today with me in New York City and Joe in Frankfurt. So hello, Joe. Hey, guys. How are you doing? Okay, everyone could answer. Um, and uh, as you can see, we got the assignment. I don't own any Christmas sweaters, but I mean, I just like, I'm just going to choke myself to death. And unfortunately, I can't even turn it on because I don't have batteries for this. It's like, it's a whole other story. It's too bad. I, but I do have a Christmas turtleneck you see here. Ta-da. Yeah. And I have like a fur. It's a, it's a, I have a new house plant that is like a year long Christmas tree now. Um, today is the the 19th of December in 23. All news not included will be part of our next news to be released on January 25th of 2024. We will take a holiday break until January 18th when you can expect the first publication in the new year in all of our channels. So now we can get going. Start with mm -hmm. the highlights. Um, we will talk about all this more in depth, but here are a couple of bullet points that you can expect in today's episodes. Aleph Alpha's AI models are getting bad press. The e-scooter tier lays off one fifth of its workforce. Solaris Bank also fires employees. So does Austrian scale-up Neum. Sport Alliance gets a hundred million dollars in funding and who will, uh, Hugo Boss, it's not that hard. Hugo Boss chips in to a fa sustainable fashion fund. Trade Republic is now a fully licensed bank and Instafreight has to file for insolvency. Some of this sounds really dark, but we also found that in total, we have more than 30 million US dollars in new VC investments in Austria, more than 25 million US dollars in Switzerland, and more than 400 million US dollars investments in Germany versus only three insolvencies. So yeah, at the core, we are pretty positive and things feel better at least a bit. Um, You can, as always, find us on all of the channels, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, CastBox, in the Global Podcast Network, formerly New York City Podcast Network. You can tune in to our own internet radio station, which more than 100,000 people did, smartening up with our content, as well, that as, uh, as, well as that of many media partners, um, for example, Tech EU and Stan the Stanford University radio show Laptop Radio. You can get our content to your inbox or cell phone. You can subscribe to us and you can find all of these options on um, linktree slash startup radio, that is link tr.ee slash startup radio or all the information is also on startup.radio um going to you joe for a word about our enablers yes our enablers this recording is made possible by hessen traded invest and the enterprise europe network These organizations have made tremendous contribution to helping startup businesses succeed and thrive, providing a range of services from helping to fund grants to ongoing partnerships. By taking advantage of these resources, startup companies can network and develop innovative strategies for success on the international stage. The dedicated support of HTIA and the Enterprise Europe Network Hessen is paramount in providing startup businesses with the tools for lasting success. Look for our dedicated sub-podcast in partnership with them called Tech Startups Germany, or of course on our link tree, as well as startupraven.com, the best way to identify investors and corporation partners for early stage startups. You can sign up for early access at startupraven.com. Getting to the tech news, Alab Alpha has been hailed as something as a European counterpart to OpenAI, and we had quite a lot of news about them, including their 500 million US dollar funding just recently. Um, they're from Heidelberg, a very nice small city, and they promoted their models as a better and non-biased 
a version of um than others, including their ability to filter out fake news. The founder liked to talk about European values. Now, the Berlin uh, newspaper, like the daily newspaper of the city called Tagesspiegel and the Hamburg-based um, weekly newspaper Zeit, discovered shocking reactions of the model in the playground, as they call it, of Alpha, where you can register with your email. For example, they have screenshots in there where the model praises Hitler, uh, has homophobic and anti-Semitic statements. Some of what the journalists discovered is shocking, and other content sounds like statements from a dumb teenager. Interviewed researchers concluded them to be weaknesses of, la of the large language model. One should keep in mind that the models are not final. And many LLMs have similar weaknesses. One should con be concerned about those models if they keep these problems and are claimed to be final and go into production. Everybody who worked with new software knows that it cannot be perfect. This is not an excuse for the statements, but since it is software, it may simply be the way to final, hopefully non-racist, non-Nazi and non-homophobic We link down here in the show notes Tagesspiegel Zeit with the articles as well as CNN as an example of the other language models that also have similar problems. 20% of the employees of Tier, scooter startup Tier, has to say goodbye. Uh, TechCrunch reports 22% of the workforce are let go in order to reach profitability. Very good timing shortly before Christmas, right, Chris? Yeah, it is what it is. But I mean, with Tier, yeah. we, we talked about these things that um, so many of these are like, th there's so many in the marketplace. And I feel as if they're running out of money, all these e-scooters. It's still, it doesn't seem like a very great business model to me because I imagine the scooters to be expensive. They need a lot of maintenance. Um Then when it starts at like 30 cents per minute, it really is not like a very attractive proposition, I think. Um, to me, it always seemed like a weird market. Also, it's not great fun to ride them, I think. Yep. I don't know. Just at least not to keep all the scooters in one city charged is totally a nightmare. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So... Yep. No. F final word, also Solaris Bank fires employees, this time around 20 employees, including three managers, have to let go also shortly before Christmas. But I'm the dark guy today. Chris, can you take over with a more positive vibe here? Yeah, and with a great wordplay because Sport Alliance raises the bar. Uh, Sport Alliance announces further growth investment from PSG with new commitments totaling a hundred million dollars. And um, uh, Sport Alliance is a company that helps uh, with the management of gyms. Um, the uh, The quote that we have is, with its product portfolio currently available across Europe, Sport Alliance enables efficient gym management and easy digital access to sport and exercise for members in sports facilities. Over 5.2 million gym members use the app solutions provided by Sport Alliance to gain simple and digital access to sports facilities, writes the company itself. Um, and they are based in Hamburg. Hugo Boss, uh, world renowned fashion company they join uh, the collateral good in a sustainable fashion fund collateral good launches a hugo boss backed sustainable fashion fund with a hundred million dollar target the fund is going to invest in innovation and technology to accelerate the sustainable transformation of the textile and fashion industry Uh, Collateral Good is uh, based in Zurich. It's climate first and it's a venture capital platform. The whole fund volume is 100 million euros, but Hugo Boss does not invest that much. Um, the article that we have is not very, um, does not even speculate how much comes from Boss, but still they are part of it and a famous name. And obviously that's also like a gigantic task to be better about sourcing in fashion. Especially when we see at the same time at the other end of the spectrum that a company like Shane with its um, no retail um, strategy, direct to customer, cheap Chinese produced fashion also gains a lot of traction and gives companies like H&M and Zara a run for their money. 
Trade Republic gets a full bank license. It's a fintech unicorn from Berlin. They now have a full bank license. In the past, Trade Republic was re regulated as a so-called secu securities trading bank. Since crypto has not been doing well, can be assumed that Trade Republic seems to aim to extend their products and services in normal banking and securities trading, as well as probably asset management. Right now, they have a lot of partnerships, with, which may be on the chopping block in the future, but overall, good news for that startup. And then Instafraid, frequently mentioned in our news, has to file for insolvency. They raised a total of 75 million US dollars, but still have to file for insolvency. Um, this is one of this year's largest startup insolvencies, most likely. Startup was founded in 2016 with the aim to get transportation space for B2B customers who only look to get one pallet transported. They raised $40 million in a Series B funding announced in March 22. According to LinkedIn, they have around 140 employee employees. That's at least who are online on LinkedIn. They uh, were regarded as, uh, or, sorry, they had amongst their investors companies like Shell Ventures, Heliad Equity Partners, Euro the European Investment Bank, and Rocket Internet. Back to you, giving us an overview of what we achieved. If oh, any. yeah. Housekeeping and time to brag. I love this little part. We're not going to bother you a lot, but uh, Feedspot, one of the websites for global marketers, has listed the 15 best German stories podcast. Startup Rate made it to number one. Yes, but also our sub podcast, Woman Who Rock GSA, made it to number seven. We're very proud of that. Chris, I'm handing back to you for the ecosystem. Yeah, so top news done, out of the way. Now, ecosystem, what's happening in the countries? What are governments doing in order to improve the situation for startups? Uh, first, let's have a look at the European Union, where uh, the European VC funding nearly halved in 2023, but still shows resilience. We have a background article about that. EU negotiators... Uh, strike a political deal on AI. I mean, everyone's favorite topic right now. How can you regulate AI while at the same time totally profiting <laughs> from the chances it provides? Um, the topic will occupy us for quite some more time, obviously. We will surely have a deep dive sometime soon where more details are available about that EU agreement or what it means for um, national laws in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Um, and we have an article uh, that lists the EU countries with the most successful companies. France is slightly ahead of Germany. Speaking of Germany, SPACs, are they still around? Question mark. Turns out, no. Famous entrepreneurs and investors in Germany return the money they have raised for their SPACs to investors. Um, we have a background article about that from Business Insider in our show notes. And there's a study that the German AI market grows by one third to 6.3 billion euro and is, is ex expected to grow by another 30% in 2024, according to Bitcoin, the German IT trade association. Moving on from the overall ecosystem in our countries to specific looks at certain startup hubs. And we start with your hometown region. Frankfurt am Main, Rhein-Main region, yes. Um, investment platform BetterVest wins Germany Sustainability Award 2023 in the category of finance. Congratulations to the team. Actually, that was a startup founded more than 11 years ago on the first startup weekend here in Rhein-Main. Cologne, Sestrify secures additional funding, acquires competitor Pengu to solidify its market positions. Sestrify, a Cologne-based SaaS procurement platform, secured additional funding in its Series B round and acquired a competitor. That one I found pretty interesting here in Cottbus. Sander Laboratories from Cottbus gets a 30 million euro research grant for the development and now neurotechnology prototypes. The project is called Neuroadaptivität für autonome Systeme. Um, Chris, to be honest, for me, it could also be written, blah, blah, shamalama, ding dong. It's like when uh, the grown-ups <laughs> talk in um, Snoopy, Charlie Brown. Yeah, Charlie Brown, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. 
But I'm, but I'm sure they will do something awesome. If you know anybody from Tender Laboratories, we're very eager to learn what those guys are doing and would be happy to interview them. Handing over to the South and Austria with Chris. Yeah. Uh, Austrian energy scale up Neum had to cut 27 of their a bit more than 200 jobs. The Vienna based scale up. What did I say? 200? I can't. 100. Even, oh, 100. I can't even read what's right in front of me, even with the glasses. The Vienna-based scale-up HydroGrid raised $8.5 million venture capital for their real-time management software for hydropower. And then Hololite, which is an Innsbruck-based company that specializes in AR and VR solutions for the enterprise market, raised $12 million in funding. And Yentis, a Vienna, Austria-based data capture technology company raised 11 million euros in series A. So quite a, quite a few nice deals there for Austrian companies. Um, and we have at least two more for which this is also true in Switzerland. Vandria based in Lausanne, which is also the country, the city of the very first Eurovision Song Contest ever. Um, Vanria is a mitochondrial therapeutics company and they develop small molecule mitophagy inducers. Metophagy? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh God. They raised $20.6 million in the Series A funding. And if anyone wants cacao, the Zurich based COA raised 15 million US dollars in Series B funding to build up their cacao upcycling business. That's it with the cities, the hubs. Um, now we have some more general tech news. And before we start, a little note, since we aim to inform you about the startup world in all of Germany, Switzerland, and Austria, um, small and medium-sized enterprises and large enterprises are also active in the markets. So that means we include some news of them here as well. Um, Little, little overview. We first start with new funds in case you're looking for money. There's the Munich-based Vanagon Ventures. They launched a 30 million euro fund to heavily invest in B2B green transformation space. If you want to know more about this, we have a link there. It's called Vanagon, V-A-N-A-G-O-N. Moving on to FinTech. FinTech news here, yeah. Um Interestingly, Kangani, we had them in our interview published in February 2021. Now they're uncovered as a hidden champion, having uh, um, being able to get close or beyond 1 billion assets under custody for the next year. Um, of course, we have been way ahead of the curve in talking with them and um I vividly remember the interview because I asked them because they're crypto custodian, what's your level of paranoia here? And my interview guest said it has to be as a crypto custodian on the highest possible level. <laughs> That's what I vividly remember. Um, of course, you can uh, learn more about them in our interview. FINA, F-I-N-A, a new broker for women, has to give up only after two years. Chris, you take over a little bit general news. Yeah, some general news. Sono Motors is rescued out of insolvency, but its shares are dropped from uh, NASDAQ in a final decision of the stock exchange, according to the blog post. And then the Munich-based startup AirUp has famous investors like Frank Thelen, basically Germany's Mark Cuban, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, but it's now confronted with accusations of greenwashing. Some companies had to leave us in order to make room for others, which we call creative destruction. Schumpeters Schöpferische Zerstörung. Yes. Um, um, the software Unicorn Content for didn't go in insolvency. They asked 50 jobs. Um, they're also in here because, um, if you, if you cut a job, it can also destroy a life. Express Steuer, the tech startup from Hamburg, raised 25 million years, but now also unfortunately has to file for insolvency. And Berlin based e scooter manufacturer Uno UNU has also to file for insolvency. Unfortunately, and on a high note, successful fundraising and exits. That is just a small selection and guys who follow us on social media, they will have noticed we only share 
um, fund, fundraisings above 5 million euros or US dollars as of now. That's why we also made here our cut. Um, Unicorn Scalable Capital raised 60 million euros led by Bell Der Chan Capital, BNP Paribas, Deutsche Bank and LBBW, Landesbank Baden-Württemberg gave a 53 million uh, credit to Hamburg-based energy startup 1,5 Grad, 1.5 degrees. Takto, first thing I always read is Taco. <laughs> Takto raised 50 million euros for their AI-based tool to make su supply chains future-proof. EchoWorks from Berlin um, is working on climate neutral renovations and for this they raise 40 million years in funding. Luma Vision is a Dublin, Ireland and Munich, Germany based developer of novel four dimensional cardiac imagining and navigation platform. They raised 22 million US dollars in a series A3 funding. German Bionics I found very interesting. They raised 50 million in a Series A funding for the AI-based exoskeleton for logistics production and nursing, also described as a robot variable. It reminded me of the of the machines they're using in Alien. You remember, Chris? That you just get in and it moves around. Lacking pop culture knowledge, Chris. We have to do something about that. I'm too young. Too young. Anyway. <laughs> Berlin-based fintech banks were raises 15 million euros venture capital and plans to cooperate with Hypovines Bank. Milano Weiss, always thought about Miami Weiss here. Milano Weiss, a Berlin-based virtual pizza restaurant chain, raises 9 million US dollars in Series A funding and Quantum Dynamics, a Munich-based Quantum Sensing Company raises 7 million US dollars in seed funding. Guys, we will be back in the new year on January 18th and the next news will be aired on January 25th. For everybody who celebrates, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Frohe Weihnachten und einen guten Rutsch. Chris? Yes. You also like to say Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's? Yeah, I was frozen right before the end. <laughs> yes, I'm going to say Merry Christmas. Oh, God, I was frozen right in the very end. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening in the past year. And uh, Merry Christmas from New York City. Ho, Great. Ho, ho. Have a good year. Bye bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.